Hi everybody today on what is um, I'll take Tuesday for 400. Oh no, wait, it's not Tuesday, it's Wednesday. It's I'll take Wednesday for 600. There, I just made back my money. Um, anyway, I'm just checking in on you guys, um, uh, letting my roots grow. Um, I wish that I wish there was a filter or something on here so I wouldn't look so white. I mean, I could lay out on my patio, I guess, but um, my backyard, you know, upstairs. What? Oh my God! Look at the gray in my hair. It has never been. I didn't know I had this. Oh, wait, you guys want to hear this? Want to hear this? Um, so anyway. <laughs> anyway, I guess, I guess I could go lay outside or whatever, but I just, I mean, talk about really pretending that you have nothing to do is when you have your swimsuit on or half off and you've got some glistening oil on you. And then you're just like, I'm a loser. I have nothing to do. I'm not at Turks and Caicos. So um, what am I doing at my house when there's stuff for me to be doing here? Like I could have been spending this whole, um, pandemic like cleaning and and okay so this is one of my closets okay that's one of my closets I have quite a few more closets I'll show them to you at a different time but um yeah I have I have a couple well, I'm old and, and I always buy really, really nice. Well, I used to. I don't buy it anymore because I think it's ridiculous. I mean, fashion has a way of coming back. So when I've spent like $4,000 on a purse um, 20 years ago, at, I, you know, like a, like a Kelly bag from um, Hermes for like $10,000 or something. I could have spent, I could have been dropping $10,000 in the past 20 years on purses that cost like $100, $120. Over 20 years, I'm going to build up $10,000, $15,000 and buy myself a really, really good purse. Um, I didn't have to do that. I could, thank God, just buy it. But that's what I tell my daughters because... They don't have $15,000 to go out and just buy a purse. And I don't spend like that anymore. So don't worry. I think you saw my closet or part of my closet. Um, one of my five closets. Um, I, I don't, there's nothing more that I need. I already have a couple Birkins. I have a couple uh, Kellys. I have Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior, uh, Gucci, um, I, 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 you name it. You name it. I have it. So I don't. I don't, whatever guy, and I had, had this, said this to me, a guy said this to me, and, um, like, I was, like, just going to be so generous, I was going to be like, look, um, we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and you don't need to buy me any clothes. What guy wouldn't be thrilled to death that he doesn't have to buy me any more shoes, is, like, I need another pair of shoes, or, or clothes, like, like, I'm, I'm all good, but I had this one guy say to me, oh, good you already come equipped with clothes and shoes and at your age or something like that so I don't have to buy you any and I went <laughs> click um jerk um and I want to talk about dating apps for a second okay this is so unfair so unfair even if you don't care how much money the guy has that you're dating you don't get to see that on the app but they get to see what they want. Guys don't want unattractive women. Guys are superficial. Uh, most men, about 90% of men are superficial and just want, not just, but, but that's what attracts them. They, they, they need good looking. They need gorgeous. It's like a status symbol. It's like a, we're like a Ferrari to them. You know, I mean, I know so many guys that have, God, my hair is driving me crazy. I know so many guys who have put up with really unsavory women, um, just because they were so good looking. So, it's it's not it's not fair it's just not fair you guys get to see what we want what you want which is if we're good looking enough for you to swipe right on but we don't get to see your tax returns I mean especially when you get to be an older girl like myself and my girlfriends you know we want uh the old-fashioned 
the old fashionedness of where the woman takes care of the man, you know, I mean, after the maids and the nannies and everything, of course, but you know, we want to do, we want to be your wife and we want to do wonderful things for you. And if you have a billion dollars and a rotten personality, you can keep all your money because money ain't that important, that important. But if you're a great, great guy and working at Home Depot, that's not going to work for me either. And I hate that about myself because I grew my, myself to this a part in life where I can't take care of a man anymore and I want to live a certain way. I mean, I don't live like the Kardashians. Um, I used to, but I don't live like them anymore. And um, I want to live like how I live, even though it looks like uh, crap here because I'm only showing you my closet, not the rest of the house. Um, I'll do that on the day when my housekeeper is here. And she used to come three days a week. We had her full time, five days a week. Um, eight, ten hours a day. Then when we got divorced, I got her um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and he got her Thursdays and Tuesdays. So she got to keep her full-time job and just go to our prospective houses. Um, but anyway, what was I talking about? Um, oh, shit. Excuse my French. Oh, man. Because that means French in, in uh, that means shit in French. Mad. Oh, man. Um, what was I talking about? Was I talking, oh, men, and, and, yeah, and women like to know, you know, is he going to be able to, like, maybe take care of my health insurance, or is he going to pay for my car payment, or something? I mean, you know, look at, we're not millennials, we're not girls that were raised to get out there and get a job. I just happened to get out there and get a job after I ran away from home, which will be in the book. Ran away from home when I was 17 years old. Um, it could have been 16, but I moved, I uh, sold my $500 uh, red Toyota that didn't come with a key, it came with a butter knife, and um, I sold it back to the guy that I bought it for, for 500 bucks, and I bought an airplane ticket, and I flew up to San Francisco, and I lived there, um, and, and I had a fake ID saying I was a cocktail, saying my name was Deborah Kerr, and I was 23 years old, and I got a job at... Um, two jobs one at night at a gay bar on i lived at the corner of polk and post and there was a really cool gay bar down post and it was upstairs and i was super safe there because none of the guys wanted me so it was just me and a bunch of guys and and it was just the safest place in the world and then during the day it was really dangerous because I had to work as a cocktail waitress in the Embarcadero Center where you think I'd be safe because it's all businessmen, but that's just it. It's all businessmen. So it was scary because they would all try to hit on you where the gay guys could care less. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I'll, t I'll say in the book how I eventually made my way back home, but I did make my way back home. And, and I'll just say that's thanks to my daddy. Thanks to my daddy. I made it back home. He was really smart in how he got me home. And still to this day, do you know how many years ago that was? He will not tell me how he found me. So bizarre. Anyway, so I think on the apps, they need to put the men's income. Because I fell for a guy after my divorce and I ended up paying for everything and he ripped me off and I took him to court and by the time I got up to about nine hundred thousand dollars just in deposition fees and my my lawyer said he's not gonna have a dime to pay you back so you you're spending all this money this is ridiculous you should probably like shut it down so I shut it down and I refuse I want to live the way that I live but you've got to meet me You've got to meet me, and if you can't meet me, then I can't. But if you if you've got a, a, a you're up here above me, but you you're not funny and you're not generous to other people around you, and you're not sweet, and you don't give to charities, and you're not funny, absolutely hilariously funny, then I don't care how much money you have. A bye bye. Um, but if we're right here, and and you can make me laugh and. And, and and all those wonderful things, and we're best friends, score. But but I, I what am I supposed to do? Go through all these apps and then find out the guy's a checker? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I, but 
he's not going to be able to keep up with my bills or, or be even so that we can both pay our own stuff. So anyway, I just suggest that to the apps. Please put the man's income on the app so that we know because they get to see what they want. Why can't we see what is going to help us as women? And that's my take. Bye, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.